Minnesota. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chairman Hickenlooper, for uh, having this hearing, as well as Senator Blackburn. And uh, thank you to Chair Cantwell, and uh, as well as uh, Ranking Member Cruz. Um, I care a lot about this subject. I guess I'd start with you, uh, Ms. Mani. Um, as you know, uh, Senator Cruz and I uh, lead the Take It Down Act, and uh, we've actually passed the bill through the uh, committee, through the Commerce Committee, and I'm feeling very good. We had some issues we had to work out on the floor, and I think we have uh, resolved these so we can actually pass this bill, and I think you know the reason for this more than anyone. Um, just when you look out from your personal situation in 2016, one in 25 Americans reported being threatened with or being a victim of revenge porn. Uh, now, eight years later, that number is one in eight. Uh, meanwhile, the proliferation of AI-generated deepfakes is making this problem worse. Approximately 96% of deepfake videos circulating online are non-consensual porn. Um, so um, I know, um, and you testified, uh, about your daughter, and I am so sorry about what happened to her. And as you know, our bill would um, ban the non-consensual publication of intimate images, real or deep fake, and re require the platforms to take the images down within 48 hours notice. In your testimony, you mentioned that schools have cited the absence of state and federal laws as a reason for not taking action when kids are victimized. How would a federal law on this have changed uh, the experience, the horrific experience that your daughter and your family went through? Well, thank you, Senator. I think I'm going to just start with saying that um, in our case, in our high school, it will allow um, the platform for the school to act and do anything at this point. Um, in schools in general, I feel um, as I mentioned it before, laws um, are a form of education to our uh, society, especially right now that we're dealing uh, with schools um, and the problem of, of deep fakes uh, over there. They're a form of education, our society, of what is acceptable and what is not, and what has not been um, delivered at home or in school uh, can be delivered uh, through laws. And by fear of being... Um, criminally or in, in a civil way, anyway, affected by their actions uh, will allow, um, I guess, or will prevent, at least in, in some, some instances, um, from deepfakes being created. At the same time, the, the, as I mentioned before, uh, criminal laws and civil laws, even though they are so important, not always um, uh, the victims will choose to use them. Uh, in their um, in their advocacy for for their image, but the forty eight hours taken down uh, component of your bill, it's something that gives the victims immediate um, a way to take the ownership of their image, and some of them that's Very what they want. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, another another um, difficult story is my own uh, one of my own employees. Her son is in the Marines, and her, her husband got a call. There was someone had scraped uh, the son's voice off the internet and left this very believable message and talked to the dad and said, Dad, I need help. I need help. I need money. Um, and the dad thought it was suspicious because uh, where he was um, stationed, he wasn't allowed to call. And anyway, those we have since I've looked into this a lot and we have, and it was of course a fake call. Um, and we are starting to see families of people in the military preyed upon. And it only takes a few seconds of audio to clone a voice using AI. Criminals can pull the sample from public sources, as we know, like social media. As a result, AI enabled scams are becoming far too common. Dr. Freed, uh, while there is technology to detect synthetic images and videos. I'm concerned we're behind on finding ways to detect a synthetic voice when it's heard over the phone. How can the federal government best uh, leverage available technology to verify the authenticity of audio, particularly in cases where a consumer does not have access to metadata? 
Yeah, Senator, you're right to be concerned. The problem with the telephone is the quality of the audio that comes over is quite degraded as opposed to, for example, a YouTube video or a TikTok video, and that inherently makes detection very difficult. Also, there are serious privacy concerns. Are we gonna listen to everybody's phone call and monitor that for a deep fake or not? So I think the burden here has to shift to the producers. If you're an AI company, and you heard this from my colleague here, and you're allowing anybody to clone anybody's voice by simply clicking a box that says, I have permission to use their voice, you're the one who's on the hook for this. Um, so going after the telecoms, look, we haven't been able to get them to stop the spam calls. So why do we think we're gonna get them to stop the AI fraud? So I think we have to go after the source of the creation of these deep fake audios. All right, well, thank you. I see Senator Markey's face on the screen. So I will uh, forego any additional questions. So thank you and thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Klobuchar. Uh, Senator Markey. 